And now the last part of the tractor's tutorial, in which I will create a wall of lamels. So, in, uh, so I will just show you another use of a tractor's. So instead of um, scaling, or, yeah, changing the size, I will rotate some elements in the model. So I'm starting with a curve, which is um, my, which is representing my wall, and I want to convert this curve into a set of segments. So into a polyline. Why? Because I will, I need some elements that I can rotate. So I want flat elements. How to quickly convert curve into a polyline? Um, well, you could rebuild it with degree one, but I will use divide curve. So you can specify the number of, of divisions and then just use these points uh, in the polyline component. And here you are. So you have a polyline. It's not clear because those segments are pretty dense. If I increase the number and the resolution, it will grow. But we want this. So let's, uh, let's set it to 40 or something. So here are, here is our polyline, but I don't really want a polyline. I want a separate segments. So I will explode this polyline into segments. Here we are. Um, and let's just output them and close this group. So these are my segments. that I want to rotate. And of course I need a, an attractor. And, and a way to calculate the distance between the attractor and those segments. So you might want to, or maybe you might have an idea to use the curve closest point here but the practice is that whatever geometry you have, whether it is a curve or a surface or a B-rep, then when you are working with attractors, you want to convert it to, uh, to a point, which might sound strange, but you want to find some important point on your geometry that you will use for calculating the distance. And usually it's the center. So it might be a center of a, surf, uh, of a surface, uh, in the middle of, um, of a sphere, uh, you know, center of weight, whatever. In, in, in this case, it will be the middle of, of the curve. So I will use curve middle component to find the, the centers of those segments. And I will calculate distances between those midpoints and the attractor. And this is a simplification, but it is allowed because it doesn't change much. We don't need precision in this um, in this uh, in this case. So I will use pull point as usual, and the points that I'm or or the distance that I'm measuring is the distance between every segment and the attractor points, and I get those distances here. And now I need to well, what remap? Of course, I need to remap those values. I need to remap the distances from what they are to rotation values. So let's say that I want to uh, rotate every segment. So I have those segments and I want to rotate them um, by 90 degrees if they are nearby the attractor. So I want to fully open the, the wall if the, if the attractor is nearby. So first, uh, you know, you might just remap numbers, of course, this is the first uh, component that I need to put in here. And I know that I will remap the distances. And now we need to think whether we want to introduce some kind of um, a source domain, which is not simply just bounds. And I usually prefer to do that because I want to con control the range of influence of the attractor, so I will do it here. So construct domain um, from zero, from so from no distance, which means coincident, to maybe 50. So the 50 will be the range of influence of this attractor, and then the target 
another domain we need here construct domain or actually okay we don't need construct domain i will just simply write 90 90 to uh zero okay i will use construct domain because i might switch the order so construct domain first slider zero the second slider or first slider 90 the second slider zero why because um, distance zero would rotate so if the attractor was on any of those elements then this element should rotate by 90 degrees and every element that is 50 units or further from my attractor should get zero rotation and we will actually if you are uh, tweaking the the range of influence if you are not using the whole bounce you need to use clipped uh, output to, to for for the uh, you know output to be reasonable anyway we want to rotate now uh, so I, I want to rotate those segments right those segments will be rotated this is my geometry to rotate then the angle is my clipped output from the remap numbers and the plane uh, so the plane, the center of rotation, uh, would be the midpoints of those segments. And you can see that something bad is happening. And the reason for that is that the angle here in rotation is by default set to radians. So there are two ways in which you can tweak that. Of course, we here I specify the angle by uh, just by degrees so if you right click on the angle you can choose degrees and everything should be fine from now because previously uh, grasshopper interpreted those values as radians uh, okay now let's extrude those elements upwards just to see um, how it looks like in 3d it will give us the better uh, better idea of of what is happening so here's the attractor if i select the, the point component and in display settings i have gumballs turned on then i will be able to move it like that and here it is okay so the point with the point i am controlling opening of those segments and you can imagine applying this to a larger um, you know maybe whole facade for instance for whatever reason uh, and that would be all and the last extra part for those of you who uh, who are still here after those long 30 or 40 minutes of tutorials i will uh, give you a few hints so the most common mistakes most common mistakes so one of the most common mistakes is um, remapping a wrong value so you often when you are using pull points then i don't know why and actually some of you do that you are not remapping the distance which is a numerical value but you remap closest point so you do something like that and then you get very where the results in this case actually this would not be very um, problematic maybe in this case a little more um, you cannot do it because here you have points these are coordinates uh, you cannot and actually all of these coordinates are the same because i have just a single attractor point and whenever you put a point in a number component then it is co converted into the length of the vector, not complex number, into the length of a vector with these same coordinates. So this is just a Cartesian distance between the uh, head and tail of, of a vector with such coordinates. In other ways, it just won't work. So pay attention to that. Don't use closest points as the, as the distance. That's what, that would be the, the shortest tip. So that's one thing. The other is the, the problem. Okay, I, I made this error by my own. You are using bounce 
both as source and value. Also, I don't know why, but sometimes this... Okay, this I, I know why, because you just can... You know, so, uh, you know this this can be... You, know, you just can, you can make this mistake uh, by clicking in the wrong place. Anyway, you do it sometimes. Uh, one more thing, when you are using call pattern, then you are calling just the, the geometry, you are not calling the, the distances, so, so your lists are not even. Whenever you are doing something with the attractors, always make sure that um, your lists at the, at the end are of the same length. So check if you have, so I have 40 values here, 40 uh, clips numbers. I have 40 points or rotation planes and I have 40 whatever lines. So this is this will work fine. If you have different numbers, then something went wrong earlier. You need to check that. Um, do you make any other mistakes often? Not sure. You don't keep order in your files, but that's a general problem. You have your files have to be orderly. And that would be my last uh, remark. I think that I have nothing more to add. Um, please learn about the attractors. Uh, they might be part of the test, and most probably they will be, because this is uh, the simplest, I would say, way of testing, if you understand how Grasshopper works, more or less. Remember that attractors can be used for different for anything. There is, there is no limitation. You can use this for angle, for height, for scaling, for um, for everything, for translation, whatever you want. Um, I will post in the description. You you can find a link to uh, to additional files that you can download, uh, which are examples of how you can use attractors and. I think that this would be all. So thanks for watching and thanks for listening.